Gaming Beat Map Bat Rap. Welcome back to Beat Map Bat Rap episode 14, Kador vs. Kador, entering round 4. And of course, I get the first turn. So, the first part that we're going to do is look at the allocation of the focus. I'm going to put 3 onto my Juggernaut, hoping to take down his Destroyer. And then I use his feet, and I also cast, uh, I believe I cast Full Throttle. So basically everybody gets an extra die, they get boosted melee attacks, and they get an extra die on damage. My Juggernaut charges the Destroyer. He does take a power 14 hit from entering it, but it doesn't do any damage. Or it does, it does 1 damage, because uh, I managed just to go over his 20 armor. And now I'm just going to try to beat this knot out of this this uh, uh, Destroyer. The first one actually freezes him in place, gets a critical freeze. And I do a bunch of damage, so the full throttle won't even be necessary to continue hitting him because he is stationary. Now one thing I realized after a couple rolls is that I forgot that I just cast that, or I had just used the feat to allow him to get the extra die. Uh, so unfortunately I forgot that for a couple of the damage rolls, including this one right here. And so I should have been doing an extra die of damage for at least two of the rolls, or maybe even three. And then I remembered it, and I started doing it. All these are auto hits now because he is frozen in place, and I get three dice. And it's dice minus one because it's power plus strength 19 against armor 20. So you can see I'm doing lots of damage here. And I get another hit with my last focus. And I do dice minus one and manage to do another seven damage. And that surprisingly leaves him with one box left. And of course, if I had remembered to do the extra dice, he would be dead. It's not too big a deal because we have some Iron Fang around there that can take some shots at him. The Behemoth charges. He actually gets into base contact with two Mana Wars. Hits the first one. And he does not forget his extra die, so he gets four dice on the charge. And uh, he does, like, dice plus three, even with the shield wall, because he does half armor. And the other one's out of shield wall, so it's, like, at armor something ridiculously low, like nine. So it's dice plus three again. And so I'd have to roll pretty low, like double, triple ones, to not kill him. And so I kill both the Man of Wars with the Berserker, or with the Behemoth. And then the Juggernaut charges the other Man of War to add some insult to injury. And he manages to hit him, and he gets his extra die and he kills the last man of war. So they died really quick. They foot slogged their way over there and then died as soon as they got within charge range. The Iron Fang pikemen are declaring shield wall and just moving around to attack the mechanics. The one is going to attack. He gets an auto hit and he manages to destroy the last point of damage on the destroyer. We put the wreck marker down there. The other ones are going to try to hit the mechanics, but for some reason they're just having a hard time hitting them and they roll really low. Now we're going after the war dog okay, and we do manage to get a hit off. And we do manage to do lots of damage and kill it, but it does have a tough roll of 5+, plus, which he fails, so the dog does die. And then the other Iron Fang is in attack range of Karchev, so I'm going for an attack there. I do manage to hit him, I get 3 dice, and I actually roll really high and manage to do 10 damage on Karchev. So he's just not having any luck. I'm doing really well with my dice, and he just can't seem to do very well with his. The Grey Lords move up, but don't do really, really do anything, because there's not much for them to do at this time. So in his turn... He's going to try to see what he can do. He's going to put a couple focus on the Devastator and then move up and just destroy the Iron Fang Pikeman as much as he can, which he shouldn't have too much problem doing. So his first attack with his open fist kills the first one. The second one um, kills the second one. And so his two initials kill two Iron Fang Pikemen. And then he uses the focus for another. And he attacks the, the Standard Bear. I believe he misses. So he uses another focus to attack again. And he manages to hit him, and there's no chance that this guy will survive, as power plus strength 19 against armor of 14 will always win. Then he moves up and repairs 4 damage on Karchev, so he manages to get him so he's not quite as damaged as he used to be. And now he's hitting me with his wrenches to see if he can do any damage to the Iron Fang. So they just go ahead and roll. I believe one of them hits, but they fail to do any damage because it's like... He has to roll 12, a double 6 to do any damage, because they're in shield wall right now. Then his Devastator moves in and does his grenade thing attack, where he opens up and everybody gets hit with a power 19 attack. So he does it against the Behemoth first, actually manages to do 6 damage. And um, still not too much damage here, or it was a 5 damage, that's right, because it's my dice minus 2 for him. And he manages to do a healthy amount of damage to the Juggernaut as well as the Juggernaut had a lower armor than the Behemoth. Now he's going to use his extra focus as an attack, and he misses it. He rolls a double one. And unfortunately, that's all he would do right there. So we're at the end of round four. Unfortunately, the Devastator and Man of Wars just arrived too late. I think starting them on the other side of the board was not a good tactical move. Probably would have been better to start them just with everybody else, because that Devastator really could do a lot of damage. He could just If he ran into a group of my Iron Fang, he would kill them all with his attack. So that's unfortunate that we did not get to see him really shine. 
So we're just going to jump right into my turn 5. Obviously it's not looking very good for AJ's Kador. Going to drop 3 focus on the Juggernaut, going for a caster kill here, and then casting full throttle. I realized afterwards that this was unnecessary because the defense on uh, Karchev is only 12. On top of that, the two Greylord Turnians are going to cast the Ice Cage on him, which subtracts 2 defense cumulative, so they both hit him and manage to bring his defense down to 8. So his defense is really low, and my my mat is sick, so I'm going to hit anything but a double one. And on top of that, his very first attack, which is with the Ice Axe, oh no, sorry, the one, first one is the Open Fist, and I do a bit of damage to him. So you can see right here, just managed to do three damage. Then with the Ice Axe, I actually get a critical and freeze him in place. So now his defense is essentially zero in close combat. I get auto hits. So now the rest of the Juggernaut's attacks are going to auto hit, and you can probably predict what is going to happen at this point as it is all dice even, as he's power plus strength 19 against armor 19. And we just keep going here, he's doing even more damage. The next attack does 6 damage, leaving him with 2 boxes, and I do have one more attack, so the minimum damage I could do is 2. So obviously, doing 8 damage is enough to kill Karchev. Get the caster kill, although it wasn't a, like a, a stealth caster kill, it was really push through there and get it. Well, that's that. Uh, good game. That was a bit of a a bit of a one-sided game. I think, I think a couple things could have gone better. Yeah. Oh yeah. One, the dice were definitely on my side there. There was a couple times that I missed, but overall, I think I did pretty well with the dice. And there was a couple times when you missed when you didn't have to, rolling double ones. Yeah. I know how that feels. <laughs> Anybody who watches Beatmat Bat Rep knows that I know how that feels, especially since my last War Machine game where uh, we actually calculated it and. I think it was all six hits on Karchev were all sixes and fives, except for the one which was a six, five, and a three. So it was it was pretty brutal there. So I, I know how that feels. So the dice definitely weren't working against were working against you. Maybe bringing the guys in the side. Yeah, that was the big thing. I yeah, because they weren't able to lend a hand a lot sooner. And by the time they were there, my guys were free to charge in and kill them. Right. So, so those couple things. Other than that, you know, it was a fun game. I hope that you enjoyed it. Yeah. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned some new tactics of Kador versus Kador. That's probably the least magical battle that you'll ever see, because <laughs> all the other armies seem to have all sorts of fun tricks that they can do, whereas Kador is pretty straightforward. It's just, just butt heads and destroy as much as you can and, get, and punch your way through the caster, not just all these silly tricks to move guys out of the way and then attack the caster like some other players I won't mention here on, on this, uh, in this video. <laughs> Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for more Beat Math, Bat Reps, and other battle reports. This is Matthew. Happy Wargaming. Visit miniwargaming.com to see our videos one month early!